Welcome everybody to another screencast. Our topic today is militant resistance. Our learning outcomes, you should be able to understand the influences on Malcolm X, describe the beliefs of the Nation of Islam, and number three, understand the reasons behind the Black Panthers starting their own community programs. Let's get this thing started. Malcolm X, formerly known as Malcolm Little. He drops the Little because he calls that his slave name, but we'll get to that in a second. His father was killed by white supremacists in Michigan. Uh, from there, he moves to Harlem, gets involved in gambling and drug dealing, and ultimately gets arrested at the age of 20 for armed robbery and sent to jail. Uh, where, While he's in jail, he's going to study the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. And here is Elijah Muhammad. A little bit of info about Elijah Muhammad. He's the leader of the mostly black political and religious group, the Nation of Islam. He is often seen as a racist. He's going to preach complete separation from whites in society. And ideally, blacks, what he is saying is blacks are the first people to rule the world and that the white people uh, are the ones that tricked them out of power and began to oppress them and uh, sell them into slavery. Heavy, heavy influence on Malcolm X, and what it's going to do is influence how he speaks and his political ideals. Now, a little bit uh, more information about the Nation of Islam. They're also known as the Black Muslims. They're an activist group that believed in most uh, that most African slaves were originally Muslim and urged African Americans to reconvert back to Islam to restore the heritage that was actually stolen from them when they were sold into slavery. What they want to do is create a second black nation within the United States. And basically what they want to do is just have their own society. And again, like I said a second ago, the X in Malcolm X's name symbolizes the rejection of his slave name. So a little bit of Malcolm X specifically. With his ideals, with the way that he was speaking, with his forms of resistance and influenced by Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, they're preaching for militant resistance. They're preaching for violence and that is the vi uh, that violence is the only way uh, he's going to frighten white people with his call for the armed self-defense this is going to go on for a number of years uh, once he ends up taking this pilgrimage pilgrimage to mecca with a lot of other um, muslim people this is where he's going to learn orthodox islam where they are teaching racial equality he's standing next to uh, people that are different from him with blue eyes and that are perfectly fine with him being black and, and trying to teach him about racial equality. So when he comes back from this pilgrimage in 1964, he's going to break with the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. He is going to use the statement, ballots or bullets. If you and I don't use the ballot, we're going to be forced to use the bullet, so let us try the ballot. Again, this is a fundamental shift for Malcolm X from 1964, from everything else that he was talking about previously. He was basically saying, look at all the revolutions that have happened in the past. The American Revolution, violence. French Revolution, violence. Civil War, violence. The only way that you can attain change is through violent means. This nonviolent resistance that Malcolm X and some of these other uh, groups are, are preaching at this point, he says are not going to work. Uh, 1965, he's giving a speech in Harlem, and he is shot 21 times, one by uh, a pump shotgun and another automatic weapon. Malcolm X was murdered in Harlem at the age of 39. He was giving a speech when uh, a couple members, of, a couple believe members of the Nation of Islam uh, opened fire on him, shoot him 21 times, one with a pop, pump shotgun and another with an automatic weapon. Uh, the conspiracy surrounding his death is that those Nation of Islam members are that it was ordered by Elijah Muhammad, and the reason for that was because he was... He, he did break with him the year before, and he started to uh, change his ideals and ideologies and wanted to meet with other civil rights leaders to attain change, and that just didn't sit well with Elijah Muhammad. Now, Stokely Carmichael, uh, he is the former leader of SNCC, remember the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. He is no longer going to believe in nonviolent resistance by the mid-1960s, and the reason that he doesn't believe in nonviolent resistance anymore is simply because he sees nonviolence being met with violence. He sees African Americans being uh, having uh, police dogs turned on them, fire hoses turned on them, uh, electric cattle prods being shoved in their sides and, and electrocuted. So he's going to see all this stuff and he's just going to see it not working. What he is going to preach is black people should have defined goals and ultimately will break with SNCC. Uh, SNCC will turn, will take that nonviolent in out of there and change it to national but Stokely Carmichael was seen as the front man of this organization and some people even called him Stokely Star Michael that he was all about the fame and not necessarily about the movement itself at the at the at the roots of it 
What he's going to do is promote the creation of a black political and uh, black political and social institutions, and he's actually going to become the honorary prime minister of the Black Panther Party for a short time before he ends up breaking with them as well. He is going to popular, popularize the term black power, which is going to be a symbol of this uh, civil rights movement altogether. Now, those Black Panthers. It is founded by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale in 1966 up in the uh, Oakland area. He, or they both believed that a violent revolution was the only way to freedom, very similar to what Malcolm X was preaching in the beginning, is that all these revolutions in the past for change have come at the front of violence. They also believe that the great society that Johnson was promoting and saying he's going to end poverty and, and uh, uh, try to equalize the races is not doing enough for the black people specifically. So what they're going to do is establish daycares, free breakfast programs, and free medical clinics, very similar programs to what the great society is supposed to be doing. But what they're saying is that it's only hitting the white population. This great society is only for white people, and the especially inner cities of Oakland where there's a lot of violence and heavy black population, it's just not getting there. Uh, you can see here, this is the outside the Black Panther Party. You see Bobby Seale on the left-hand side there and Huey Newton on the right. Their, their weapons are very visible. This was a, a very open show of violence for them or a potential violent reaction. You can see here, this is the Black Panther youth. You can see the berets and the black leather jackets, and you can see the pins on the lapel there of the Black Panther. This picture right here in the bottom right, this is in 1969 in Olympia, Washington, where they're protesting a law that would make it a crime to exhibit their firearms in public. Here are the original six members of the Black Panther Party. You can see here's Huey Newton right here, and here's Bobby Seale, and the other four guys, they're kind of less significant members. But Huey Newton and Bobby Seale did get together <clears throat> in that community college in Oakland while they were really kind of passing out material, reading material, uh, on Mao Zedong, the communist leader of China. Here is a newspaper clipping of the free breakfast program that is happening in Baltimore. Now, with especially the Black Panthers, it's not just one area in Oakland. There are different factions of it popping up in, in basically every, pop, every city that has a predominant black population. We have Washington, you have Baltimore, you have uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, those major places are going to have different chapters of Black Panther Party. And you can see here, this is at one of those breakfast programs as well with the fists in the air. You can see the uh, black power uh, come to fruition here. Now the downfall of the Black Panther Party is that the police force is going to start to target them and start to kind of hit these churches where they're having these free breakfast programs at because uh, they're seeing this as propaganda, as indoctrinating the youth and uh, they just really didn't want to have any of it and they're basically calling it uh, a filter for drugs and for burglary and basically crime. Here's another picture of, of Bobby Seale. You can see this is uh, this kind of a propaganda poster. You can see the gun in the one hand and the spear uh, in the other. So a recap, you should be able to understand the influences on Malcolm X. His father was killed by a white supremacist, so you can see the, the, violent, uh, the want for violence there and reaction. Also, his influences by Elijah Muhammad. The Nation of Islam remembered wanting to create their own uh, black population and violent resistance. And lastly, understand the reasons behind the Black Panthers starting their own community programs. They just simply didn't think that the uh, Great Society was doing enough. So, if you have any questions, let me know. Send me an email. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. I'm out.